Hello and happy Friday, y'all. Thank you for joining me on another episode of Mental Health, The New Wealth. I am your host, Nikita Nicole, the Illuminist, and I am so super excited that you decided to join me for another episode today. Today, we're going to get into a topic that affects us all as it's related to everything that we do on an everyday basis as important as the words we speak and the habits we have and continue on a regular. I have one with you guys. You guys have one with me, social media, your families, your co-workers, the material things that you have in your life, money, food. You have one with everything that you deal with. Today, we're going to speak about the topic of relationships what relationships mean, what they are, what they look like in our lives, and how we can show up for ourselves and cultivate better relationships mentally, spiritually, and physically. I am feeling good on this Friday, and I am excited to be here with you guys today. I got some extra R&R, which is something that we talked about on another episode of Mental Health, The New Wealth. We have some nature in the background and we're going to let nature do what nature does as it is also healing and grounding to us, reminding us that we are spiritual beings here on this planet having a human experience. I am excited because this will be a jump off to the relationship series. This will be the first episode continually speaking with and representing different facets of relationships so that we all can gain clarity and understanding through different relationships. I hope that you are excited as I am because we are going to have some juicy relationship series topics. So sit back, relax, and let's get into this episode. Before we get into this episode, let me say that I am not a licensed mental health professional nor doctor, although I will host licensed professionals as guests from time to time. The mental health difficulties discussed on this podcast will come from extensive research, life experiences of myself and others, and are not to be taken as diagnosis, prescription, or cure to any health mental difficulties or disorders. If you are experiencing deep mental health difficulties of any kind and have lasted for any duration of time, please contact your local mental health professional for assistance with treatment. If you or someone you know is suffering with mental distress or thoughts of suicide, you are not alone. Please call the toll-free National Suicide Prevention Hotline, open 24-7 at 1-800-273-273. 8255. Again, that is 1 800 273 8255. Now let's get into the episode. Webster's Dictionary defines relationships as the way in which two or more concepts, objects, or people are connected or the state of being connected by blood, marriage, or relation. The way in which two or more people or groups regard and behave towards each other. Likewise, relation can be defined as the way in which two or more concepts, objects, or people are connected. A thing's effect or a relevance to another. What's up family? And thank you for joining another episode I am your host, Nikita Nicole, the Illuminist, and today we're talking about relationships. Relationships are so important because they are one of the most important factors that we all have in our lives. The relationships that we have and cultivate is one of the major reasons for the lives that we live today. It is almost as powerful as the words we use and the habits that we create. So I wanted to break down relationships and talk about the different relationships that we have because relationships can uplift or damage, build or break down. They can be catalysts for ascension or devices for downfall. And so it's very important for us to understand what relationships we have and we hold and how we operate with them on an everyday basis. So let's go into some of the forms of relationships there are. There are family relationships, friendships, acquaintances, romantic and sexual relationships, work relationships, and situational relationships. 
Now, although these are not all the relationships that we have, these are some of the standard categories of relationships that we hold. And so what are the relationships that you have in your life on a daily basis? You can have family relationships, mother, daughter, children, parent, sibling relationships, our acquaintances, people that we say hi and bye to and we know on a passing, relationships that we have that are romantic or sexual one to another, our work relationships, our co-workers and people we see at our places of work, and situational relationships, relationships that we cultivate with others due to the situation. And in all of these different facets of relationships, there are different ways that we operate in these relationships. But I'll give you some time to just think to yourself and ask yourself, what relationships do you have in your life? It doesn't necessarily have to be with a person. It can very much be used in in the way of a noun. So a person, place, or thing. What relationships do you have in your life? What relationships do you have and hold with yourself? What relationships do you have with others? What relationships do you have with money, children, parents, loved ones, co-workers? What relationships do you have with goals, your spouse? There's so many relationships that we have that without us being able to really just sit down and think about these things, it's easy to overlook because there are relationships that we have even with the material items that we hold. And so learning how to work with these relationships can help us cultivate better relationships in the long run. So let's talk about different ways in which we show up in these relationships. Now that we have a better understanding of what different kind of relationships these are, and these are not the only ones, but these are just the main categories of relationships that we have on an everyday basis. Like I said, we have relationships with material things, spiritual things, and pretty much a relationship with everything that we come in contact and are around on a regular basis. However, Let's talk about some of the ways that we can show up or that we have seen these relationships work out in our lives. So there is platonic relationships. This is classified as a close intimate bond without sex or romance. So if you having sex, if y'all getting down, if y'all buddies in that way, then you do not have a platonic relationship. A platonic relationship is something that if you are in a relationship, you would be able to talk to your spouse about this other person with no problem because you guys have no additional romantic or sexual relationship. After that, there is romantic and sexual relationship. This most often involves intimacy, love, sex, and sometimes commitment. Now, romantic relationships don't garner commitment, but a romantic relationship can involve commitment. There's also codependent relationships. This is an imbalanced and dysfunctional relationship where a partner or partners have an emotional, physical, or mental reliance on one another. Now, I'm sure that a lot of us have dealt with codependent relationships before. They're very easy to get into and cultivate. And so it's very important that you watch in relationships, making sure that they're balanced. There is also a casual relationship. A casual relationship is a dating relationship that may or may not involve sex and has no expectations of monogamy or commitment. So you can have these relationships with friends and romantic partners and that you guys link up, y'all spend time together. You maybe even might have sex with them, but there's no agreement so far as monogamy or commitment in the relationship. Also, likewise, You might be going to an event or doing something else and you and this person have no romantic relationship at all. You just enjoy their company in certain situations. So you decide to take this person with you or you go with this person um, to different things. It's kind of close to a different form of a situational relationship, which we will discuss a little later on. There's also open relationships. Open relationship is a consensual relationship where both parties agree to dating, having sex, or carrying on a relationship with others while maintaining the initial relationship. 
Now, to a certain degree, this seems to be the climate of where we live today. This looks like an entanglement or a situationship like Will and Jada have, but I don't know their business. I don't know them people, but I'm trying to give you guys an example of what this looks like. An open relationship as one in one that I enjoy being with you. I want to build with you, but we're making an agreement that we're going to be able to go outside of this initial relationship and develop relationships with others. Now, I can't say that I'm able to do this, okay? I'm not big on the whole idea of commitment because commitment sometimes, if you're not healed, looks like ownership. So I am in building a partnership to where we have boundaries and understandings. However, I don't think that I would be okay with you carrying on a actual full-blown relationship with someone outside of our initial relationship. And a lot of times this looks like polygamy. There is also situational relationships. So these can be negative or positive. I'm not going to say good and bad. They just have different vibrational frequencies. And the reason why I say that is because you can actually say that all of these relationships that I talked about today are certain situational relationships because you have relationships with certain people based off of the situation. You like and care for a person, so you decide to have a romantic relationship with them. You think someone is cool, so you guys develop a platonic or a, a casual relationship. So I would say that all of these are situational relationships. However, situational relationships is defined as a relationship that you start up for a particular purpose. Some people use these situational relationships in a in a sense of hypergamy, you're going to get with someone who has the ability to elevate your lifestyle, the ability to take care of you. And so you will develop relationship with people on a certain stature and no one beneath that. Or you position and place yourself in relationships that will help you achieve your goals. Situational relationships most often come from an opportunistic standpoint in that you get into relationships and situations that will benefit you in the greatest way. And let's shed some light on that because there is something to be said about people that take advantage of opportunities that present themselves. I feel that there is nothing wrong with that. If an opportunity presents itself in the form of a relationship, a networking opportunity, an alliance, an alignment, a partnership, I feel that you should take advantage. However, when being an opportunist goes wrong is when you exploit or you have ill will against the person or the relationship, knowing in the back of your head that you have nothing to give this relationship. It is a one-sided relationship in which you feel that you are going to benefit the greatest. And so you come into the relationship and just going to take. That is when being an opportunist goes wrong. That is when it is unhealthy. And then last but not least are toxic relationships. Now we have heard about these toxic relationships. Everybody makes a joke like, oh, they are toxic. Oh, I am toxic. And toxic relationships are not the greatest because they keep us in lower vibrational frequencies, allowing us to perpetuate and repeat these same toxic habits, relationship, and have codependent relationships based on the collective toxicity that we hold. So toxic relationships is classified as any type of relationship where your emotional, physical, or psychological well-being is undermined, threatened, or compromised. So what does that look like when you are in competitive and controlling relationships? That can be in friendships and relationships where you always got to compete with each other. There is a certain thing as healthy competition we always do our best. Me and my squad are always the best at what we do, but it borders a fine line when you start to be competitive to where you are jealous or envious of your, your friend or the people that you are involved with because of the abilities that they have to where you are not really genuinely happy for their accomplishments and the advancements that they're making in their lives. 
So usually we have competitive and controlling dynamics. So one is a competitive person. The other one is a controlling person. Another facet of a toxic relationship is an active and passive relationship. So you have one in the relationship that is very active, that always carries the heavy load, that carries the relationship. This can be in friendships as well as romantic relationships. But one person in the relationship is always doing the most, always going the extra mile. And the other person in the relationship is very passive. They barely do anything. They barely seem interested. They are just receiving what the active party of the relationship is giving. So this looks like in a relationship, someone is always going the extra mile, paying the bills. It's no reciprocity in the relationship. Uh, The other person is passive, allowing and willing to let things fall by the wayside because they don't want to get out of their own way and be an equal participant in the relationship. So this often burns the person that is the active participant out in this relationship because it's not equal. Another version of a toxic relationship or a polarity in a toxic relationship is an aggressive and accommodating relationship. So this looks like one of the partners in the relationship is overly aggressive and the other person in this relationship is accommodating. So you see this in different forms when one is always, uh, you know, having something to say, very negative personality, maybe even shout or gestures to be violent or get upset very easily to where they destroy things. And it's just a dramatic affair. And so the other person in this relationship is always accommodating, always, okay, well, whatever it is that you want so that they can keep this person's temper under control or that they can subdue the other person by just doing what they want. And so this is very toxic because it leads you to having an uneven relationship It makes the person that is angry or basically having the temper tantrum them more volatile, more willing and eager to use their temper and misconduct in a relationship to get what they want. And it makes the other person continuously undermined and not feeling loved, cared for, provided for or protected because they don't know when the other person is going to go off on the deep end. These relationships are oftentimes lead to abusive or physically abusive relationships, mentally and emotional abusive relationships if the actions are not corrected. Another version of a toxic polarity relationship is disconnected and parallel lives. And so you see this a lot when people decide that they want to be together, but they don't really like each other. They're not putting in the work to make their relationship work or to continue the spark in the relationship. So this looks like when two people, they wake up, sometimes they even have separate rooms because they have become so disconnected that they have no interest on sharing or joining each other's lives. You guys have the same address, but not the same lives, not the same thought processes, not the same goals collectively in life. Y'all just live in life together. So that looks like you maybe wake up in your room. They wake up in their own respective rooms. You guys have your own bathrooms, your own lives. You have nothing combined together. So you guys are living in parallel lives. You guys are disconnected. Y'all don't even go grocery shopping together. There might be not anything in the relationship that connects you, but your children, if you guys had decide or did have children. But other than that, there's nothing in the relationship that connects these two separate individuals as one unit. And you see this a lot of times when people just have the philosophy, it's cheaper to keep them. You know, I don't want to go through the divorce. I don't want to go through, you know, separating the relationship. So I'm just going to go alone to get along. Don't touch my stuff. I won't touch yours. I don't have an opinion about your life. I don't have any praises for your accolades or the advancement that you're making in your life. We are just here living together. And I see this a lot of times, not in friendships so much, because if you operate like this in friendships, then you guys just will not continue a friendship. However, a lot of times I see this in relationships where people have decided just to continue on. 
in a relationship with no advancement with one another and no common goals for growth in the relationship. And so looking at these different relationships and how we show up in these relationships, whether they are platonic, romantic, codependent, casual, open relationships, toxic relationships, however we are involved in these relationships is how we cultivate and play out our lives on a regular basis. It's really important to understand the relationships that we are in because they shape and form us and how we operate in these relationships cultivate a part of who we are. So if you are in a lot of fake situational relationships, you nine times out of 10 start to form and morph into a fake opportunistic person. If you are in relationships around others that are not happy on a continual basis, you will also be unhappy. It's like when you always see drug addicts. I've never seen pretty much a drug addict by themselves. Anyone that has an addiction or is an abuser of drugs, you always got a homie. You got to always got a homie that helps you. Y'all get the, the, the drug money together. Y'all do y'all thing. But what are they always doing? They're arguing. They have developed a codependent, toxic relationship, a trauma bond that has developed off of addiction and drug use. If one of those people decide to get clean, they wouldn't even be friends with the other person. And that's what's important to understand. Who are you having relations with? Relationships are nothing but a vehicle, a transportation vehicle from moment to moment in our lives. Some relationships are here for reasons, some are here for seasons, and some are here for a lifetime. So it's important for you to evaluate these relationships and how you show up in these relationships to determine how long you need to be in these relationships. Are these relationships serving me? Is this something that I need to continue feeding or is it time to let some of these relationships go? Are you in relationships with people who are opportunistic and materialistic, always talking about how much something costs, how much money they have, what they're doing, what they got going on. But when you really try to talk to them about something deep, something that's going on with you emotionally, spiritually, maybe even mentally, they don't have no time for it. If you're not talking about the new Chanel bag that dropped or, oh, did you see such and such an outfit online? And did you look at this? And did you see that? And all in other celebrity business and, oh, I just spent a thousand dollars on this. And, you know, that cost 1500 on that. And if you're not talking about that, they're not, they're not interested in what it is that you have to say. And so you develop emptiness in those relationships, but you stay in them because of what it looks like for you to be acquainted with those individuals. Are you the scapegoat in some of your relationships? And what I mean by that is, are you the person that don't keep yourself up, don't have a lot of self-worth, is working on your self-esteem, but you're not quite there yet, but you find yourself always with attractive friends, friends with money, friends with affluence. And they might be in situational relationships, but they always want to have you around. And you notice that you're always the butt of every joke. We've been together all day, but damn near all that y'all talking about is me or my situation or what I have going on. And at the end of the day, when you leave from them, you don't feel good. You don't feel uplifted. And you begin to realize when you really sit and look at it that you are friends with these people only to elevate and make them feel good about themselves. Are you in a toxic relationship to where you always having to argue, fuss, and fight? Someone is always turning your word around on you. You can never express how you actually truly feel without them telling you, no, you don't feel like that. That's not what you're feeling like. Or when it's time for them to fess up to something that they have done to make you feel a certain way, they have an excuse as to why they've done what they've done. It was you that make me treat you in a certain way. Never taking accountability for what they do to you, but always want to point fingers at your reaction towards them. 
Are you in relationships where you feel like you have to buy people? You always have to go above and beyond. You're always spending. You're always doing. You're always going out of your way. But when you are on hard times and things go wrong, they are never nowhere to be found to help you out of the hole. They assisted in putting you in the hole, but they never help you out of the hole. They don't have time. They don't have money. I can't do anything for you when it's your turn to gain reciprocity in the relationship. You begin to develop into the people that you are around. And likewise, just like if you have children or siblings and you guys are around each other, y'all start to develop same characteristics and start to become the same type of people. That's the same thing that happens in all the relationships that we have. So you can't be with people and say, oh, I don't fool with them like that. That's just my acquaintance. But you're talking to them every day on the phone. You checking in with them almost every other hour. And so these people are becoming parts of your life. But you steady talking about, oh, I don't fool with them like that. Yes, you do. And if you do fool with them like that, I'm not saying that there's nothing wrong with that. But quit trying to disassociate yourself from people that you don't feel is idealistically your friend or would be a part of the people that you would select for your friendship group or the people that you would want to have around you. But you hold communion with them. You break bread with them. You fool with them on a regular basis. So you can't keep on saying, oh, no, I don't fool with them like that. Oh, they like this and they like that. I'm not like that. Yes, you are. You're guilty by association. And the more and more you continue to involve yourself with people that you do not align with, you will become them. Now, if you are spiritually strong, there are a lot of times and a lot of situations to where your vibration can uplift another person to where you are. But most oftentimes, you have to do an unsurmountable amount of work to make sure your vibration stay high, to make sure that those negative attitudes attributes and those negative things do not bring you down. You should work at finding yourself in relationships that make you feel good. If the relationships that you are in make you feel devalued, that your emotions and your feelings are not taken into consideration, then that's not a relationship that you need to be in. In a male or a female standpoint, if you are in a relationship to where you are tolerated and not celebrated, that is a relationship that you need not cultivate. You need not give that no more time. You need to move on from that. Anybody who is with you, whether they are in a friendship relationship, a platonic relationship, or a romantic relationship, should celebrate you and be excited to be with you, should be excited to be acquainted with you, should be excited to have the opportunity to be in your presence on a regular basis, should be excited that you think of them in the way that you think of them. If the relationships that you are in does not build you, build your spirit, build your mind, build your body, then they are relationships that you need to cut loose. A lot of us spend a lot of times holding on to relationships that were only there for a certain reason. You were down and this relationship helped you to climb up or this relationship was so toxic that it helped you to understand that you must love yourself before anyone is able to love you. Some relationships were here for a season, carrying them on like they're lifetime relationships and they're not that. I have been guilty with confusing situational relationships, meaning business relationships. I had a near and dear friend to me end our relationship. And I didn't agree with it at the time. But when I thought about it, how we started the relationship, how we continued the relationship and how the relationship was going was a business and service relationship. Regardless of the personal things that we've shared, regardless of the things that we talked about with each other, I had got confused. But the bottom line was the relationship was a business relationship. When we talked about the ending of the relationship, I was hurt, but it it helped me to understand a powerful lesson. It is important to understand the relationships that we have, what they are for, and how long we are to keep them. I'm not saying that you have a running tally of how long I'm going to be cool with you. I'm not saying that. 
Most of the people that I have connections with, we are cool for a lifetime. Anything that you need, every time that I see you, is always going to be agape love. If there's anything that you need that I can provide for you, even if we don't talk on a regular everyday basis, I got you. You don't have to worry about that. But it's important to put people in the proper category so that you can protect your feelings as well as theirs. Had I put that relationship in the proper category and understood that, yes, even though we are connected and we agree on a lot of things, this relationship is built off of product and service, then later on down the line, I would not have been disappointed. Time does not necessarily mean loyalty. Just because you've known someone for over a span of time does not mean that their relationship in your life should remain constant due to the differences that you need in your life. We all grow. We all change. What I needed yesterday or even two weeks ago is not the same thing that I need and desire today. At a certain time, I might need it to be uplifted in a certain way. And you were here to do that. And I appreciate that. But at this time, I need someone to feed me mentally to assist me in elevation spiritually. And that doesn't mean that I dislike you now. That doesn't mean that we are not close anymore, but that just means that the desire for what I need right now is different. So I encourage you to quit allowing people to catch you up in situationships and relationships that do not serve you. And it does not have to be done in a negative way. It could be just as simple as our vibrations no longer align. I love you and I appreciate you for the time spent and the lessons learned. I bid you peace. And that's it. A lot of us have to understand and realize that when we disconnect relationships or a relationship falls off, it does not always have to be necessarily negative. It does not necessarily have to be, oh, because I don't fool with them. It could just be simply, we have grown apart. And just as you have grown apart People grow back together. You might link up with that person years on down the line after you have learned and done certain things in your life. And now that relationship is back and it is beneficial to what you are doing and where you are at that time. And because you are going through these relationships with love, compassion, and acceptance, I don't have no ill will towards you. When you come back, I am able to pick up where we left off because there was no animosity and nothing left. There was no blocks in my heart chakra due to our relationship because I had expectations for you that was not clear and understood. And a lot of the expectations that we require of people or situations, we need to fulfill those for ourselves. Let me repeat that. A lot of expectations and requirements we have of other people, we end up being upset with them once the relationship is over because we need to fulfill them in ourselves. If you are in a relationship or friendship, whatever the situation, it is nobody's responsibility to make you happy. It is nobody's responsibility to bring you peace. It is nobody's responsibility to financially support you. You must do these things on your own. Anybody that comes into your life experience can add on to these things, can add to what you already have built the foundation for. However, their presence should not be predicated on whether you are financially stable, happy, at peace, healthy, mentally, spiritually, or physically. So if you continuously find yourself in relationships that look like this, you are developing trauma bonds. You are developing codependent relationships. And people make reference to that a lot. That's a trauma bond. So let me help you to understand what a trauma bond is because it's very important to understand. A trauma bond is like I mentioned earlier. Just say, for instance, you have been hurt in a certain way. Another person has been hurt in a certain way. So you guys connect on that level and have a codependent toxic relationship based off of that negative bond. I have experienced abandonment. So have you. So we got together and we decided that we would never leave each other no matter what. 
because we have been left in our lives. And so we continue on knowing very damn well that we probably should have left each other so that we can get ourselves together. But we have developed a trauma bond. A lot of people develop sexual trauma bonds, emotional trauma bonds. There are so many levels of it. But in general, a trauma bond is two people uniting on a toxic front. And trauma bonds don't necessarily have to be only in a romantic relationship. Trauma bonds can be with friends, with children, a lot of things. And so, like I spoke about earlier, it's important to look at the different relationships that you have, not only with yourself, with material things. What kind of relationship do you have with money? Do you have a balanced, leveled relationship with money? Or you have a codependent relationship with money? Or you got a toxic relationship with money? There is a difference in being poor and broke. If you are poor, you do not have the economic means to get what it is that you need to sustain yourself on an everyday regular basis. But if you broke, you didn't have that money in your hands several times. You did not have a relationship with money of respect to where you were a good steward over your money. So now you borrowing, robbing Peter to pay Paul. You, oh, I ain't got it over here. And you want people to have a pity party for you. But you didn't have that money in your hands several times. And I can say that if there was a time in my life to where I was broke. Broke is a mindset. You can be a millionaire and be broke because broke is the foundation and the relationship that you have with money and stewardship over money. What relationship do you have with your self-care? Do you always do for others and pick yourself very last? Make excuses for why you overweight or you have not hit your target health goals? Okay, that's fine and I understand that. But at the end of the day, that looks like a toxic relationship with self and your value, with what you feel like that you deserve. So that shows up in other ways. Also, what is your relationship with food? Is food sustenance something that you give yourself to to live and thrive? Or do you use food as a crutch for your emotions? Oh, I'm happy. I got to eat. Oh, I'm sad. I got to eat. I got a promotion. I got to eat. They laid me off of work. I got to eat. My children are getting on my nerves. I got to eat. The things that you choose to eat and the things that you put in your mouth and in your body. What are your relationship with those things? Are they directly connected to your emotions and how you feel? If that is the case, then you have a codependency on food. You see how these relationships are very important in our lives? If we learn to balance these relationships, then we can show up for ourselves and others in such a better way. If we can stop making excuses and stop allowing relationships to just happen to us, instead of picking and choosing the relationships that we want to be in, we will be much better off. You don't have to deal with a person. You don't have to deal with a situation, anyone that you do not want to deal with. You do not have to be bullied into a relationship. Build your self-esteem and self-worth to where you understand that you deserve to be selective and picky about the people who you fuck with and have access to you. Everybody that knows me knows. Everybody just can't kick it with me. And I don't even be on a you can't sit with us type vibe. I pick and choose what I want around me because it is very important, the vibration I keep. Are we uplifting or are we breaking down? Every time I come around you, am I being negative? Are you being negative? I had to start watching myself around people. And don't get me wrong, sometimes in certain situations, I was the negative party. It wasn't the other party. I had to do massive amounts of work on myself to make sure that I am elevating at all times, that I am the person that I am today and loading. This is an everyday thing. This is not something that just happens one day and you work on yourself one day and it's solved. No, a lot of times in certain situations, I was the negative party and I had to step back and evaluate myself. Who wants to be around someone that is negative all the time or always has something smart to say when really it is cloaked in self-loathing and not doing my work? When I decided to do my work and push forward and make sure that I was the best person that I can be on an everyday basis, the things that I do, the people that I'm around, the habits that I maintained, 
all changed? What is your relationship with certain functions? I really can't go to the club. I'm not shading people that do. Enjoy yourself. Have a good time. Dress up. I have nothing to say about that. I'm just saying vibrationally where I'm at, my relationship with places like that are not positive. So what are your relationships to certain things? What are your relationships to stimulants? Do you have to smoke every day? Do you have to drink every day? I've been there too. Every day after work, oh, this is a long day. Let me let me get a drink. Damn near drink a full bottle of wine almost every other day after work and was wondering what kind of relationship I had with alcohol. Well, sis, it's not that much to figure out. If you clearing out almost a full bottle of wine every day after work, the relationship that you have with alcohol is clear. It's in your face. That goes along with my guys and a beer or the blunt or whatever that you need to cope on a regular basis. What relationship do you have with these things? What relationship do you have with sex? Do you go around just finding people to have sex with? Y'all don't even got no relationship. You got a whole bunch of casual relationships here and casual relationships there. And you join in everything with everybody. Of course, you're probably confused. Of course, you feel a certain type of way because your relationship with sex is one of excess. Any sexual contact that you make should be uplifting, should be energizing, should be enlightening, should be manifestational. But here is the hack. Regardless of whether your relationship with sex is positive or negative, high vibration or lower vibrational, you are still manifesting. Us as individuals are one of the main major manifestational beings here on this earth. We will have what we cultivate. We will have what we ritualize and we practice. So just imagine when you join two people together and the orgasmic energy that you guys create, if you even have an orgasms, but that's a whole nother topic. If the orgasmic energy that you guys create is a vortex for rapid manifestation, it still is that whether it's negative or positive. So you just basically linked up with this person because you guys have a codependent, casual relationship and you are manifesting more negativity, more trauma bond, more confusion, more lower self-esteem. And that is why at this time, my relationship with sex is to remain abstinent. I'm not celibate. I'm not saying that I'm not never going to do it. And I'm not saying that I'm above doing it. But what I am saying is I understand and respect the honor of having sexual intercourse with another person. My relationship with sex is so to where I know how important it is. And so if we cannot manifest together, if we cannot cleanse and pray together before we embarked on this act, I don't want it. If your relationship to sex or the opposite sex is based off of porn, is based off of TV shows and other things that you see, I don't want it. So now that we've discussed different relationships, different ways they look, different things that we do in and out of relationships, let's talk about what we can do to mend these relationships and gain balance in these relationships. In dealing with relationships and gaining balanced relationships, you should always understand that there should always be a reason for relationships and how you operate in these relationships. Case in point, if you have a coworker at work and you guys get along and everything goes good, y'all are just acquaintances, before you guys exchange numbers, before you guys decide to be a part of each other's lives outside of work, there needs to be a concrete reason as to why you are doing so. We are both trying to get out of this job. We are both trying to elevate. We both have things that are in alignment with each other. And so I want to continue this relationship. Same thing with romantic relationships. We are past the days to where you just see a person and you like, yeah, what's up? Let me get your number. We're not there no more. 
I mean, I will social media you to death before you are able to have access to me and my personal time. I need to know who you are, what you about, what's going on before I decide to allow you into my space like that. If I was able to tell my younger self some game from my older self, I would vet people before they had access to me. I would vet people and really check them out before I was so giving, before I was so open, before I just allowed them into the person that is me. So first and foremost, there needs to be a reason for the relationship. What is there a reason? Why are we linking? Okay, you know, let's put it on something that's physical. Your relationship with working out. There has to be a concrete reason why you would get up in the morning or go to the gym or whatever at the end of your day. What is the reasoning? And it can't just be to look good because that's not enough. Why? What is the reasoning that you have this relationship with exercise? Because you want to feel good? Because you want to live and have a long, meaningful life with your loved ones? What is the reason for why you're doing what you're doing? Once you figure that out and you have your why, it is easier for you to maintain these relationships mentally, spiritually, and physically because when the going gets rough and things get tough, you have a reason for why you're doing what it is you're doing. And like I said, sometimes the reason changes and that's okay, but at least you have an initial reason for why you're going into what you're going into. Also, another thing in developing concrete foundational relationships is being somewhat detached. Now, I have a quite an issue with this because I can love you to death, but still be somewhat detached. I think that a part of that is because of the abandonment issues that I have suffered from. Although I am healing from those It allows me in a way to have a benefit to care for someone, but not allow that person to be my everything just in case they leave. Or if something happens, I'm not just broke down and broke up all over it. Now, I'm not saying to not be connected with people and have genuine relationships with them. I'm not saying that at all. But never give someone a person, place, thing so much importance, so much seniority, so much so to where if something happens, then you are devastated. And you know what? Now that I'm thinking about this, this makes me think about the relationship that people have when they first come into a spiritual community. So just say, for instance, you are going to church or whatever, and someone introduced you to church. And so you're going and you're being a member, you join or whatever have you. And so you don't develop a relationship spiritually for yourself. The relationship that you developed is through the person that brought you into the church. And so when this person fails you or when this person shows their human frailties, because we all do, then you are devastated. You don't want to have a relationship spiritually with that faith. You no longer want to go to that church. You no longer want to fool with anybody that had any connection with that before. And so that is an example of what I'm meaning. You want to be connected, definitely, but you want to have a certain level of healthy detachment so that if anyone or anything falters, you can step back and look at that person and say, you know what? I still love that person. I still care for that person, but that's not really the route that I want to go. And you can be okay with it. And you're not devastated based off of the connection being lost or lessened. Another thing that is important to understand is develop a kinship first. Develop some commonalities, some things that you guys mesh on, and then develop an open and accepting relationship. And what I mean by open and accepting is in friendships and relationships that you mean to cultivate into a romantic relationship, go into this friendship 
learning and trying to understand the person. You're not going in trying to change them. You're not going in trying to tweak them into what you're, you want them to be. You're not going in with rose-colored glasses, assuming that they are this person when blatantly in your face, they are not that person because that's who you need in your life at that time. You are in a relation with this person and allowing them to authentically be who this person is. And I cannot stress this enough. This is very important because when you go into a relationship, like I want to change this person, I'm going to love this person into the person that I want them to be or gift them into the the person that I want them to be or however in your head you feel that you're going to morph or manipulate this person into who you want them to be, you're only going to be disappointed because after that is over, they're still going to remain themselves. And so what's important to understand and learn is if you are maintaining your authenticity and they are maintaining their authenticity, then your friendship, your relationship, your companionship, and what you're building will be built on strong foundation because you're not going in wanting them to be anything else than who they are originally. So when they are going through changes or you do have changes in your friendship or your relationship, your romantic relationship, you can look at that person and say, you know what? I may not like you right now, but I still love you. And look at them at the standpoint of my friend is going through something right now. My friend is having some difficulties with something right now. And I can love them through that. And it's okay if they're going through that. When you approach your friendships with having kinship and commonality and then growing into a real authentic friendship, not one of control or conforming, then you have a serious strong foundation for a long living friendship, relationship, and companionship. Another thing that you must do, and I am so big on this, and I I probably do is too much, but to me, there's no such thing as communicating too much. You must communicate. When you are developing these friendships and relationships, say, hey girl, I like your style. I need you to help me, wooty, wooty, woo. You know what I'm saying? Or, you know what? We both have children and I think that we can start play dates at the park together. State the relationship that you intend to have. Now, it can morph into something later on and that's fine. But when you're open and you communicate about the desired relationship, then it allows you and the other person to be clear about the connection you have, whether they want that connection and then the part that they need to play into allowing that connection to grow. So after you do develop, okay, we went to the park, Our children love each other. We had a couple of play dates. Let's link up at each other's house and do a potluck. Let's throw a party together. And then over time, you guys develop a relationship. I have several relationships that I am very clear on what they are. I have some people that are my spiritual writers. You know what I'm saying? We come together on spiritual aspects and we do that. I have some relationships that I have that when I want to go out and do things, they are great people to go out with. And so one will call these situational relationships, but it's very important to understand the relationships that you have and why they are in your life so that you are clear and not confusing the relationships so that you understand what they are there for, why you have them. And so you can utilize them to the best of your ability. Always communicate. If there is a shift in a relationship or you notice that there is a shift, now I'm not saying say something about every little thing that happens. I'm not saying that at all. However, if you notice that there is a shift and a little while after that, the shift is still there to where it affects the dynamics of your relationship, it is important to pull your friend to the side. Even if you are in a relationship, a romantic relationship, this is your friend first. Pull them to the side and say, hey, I noticed this shift. I noticed that this is going on. How do you feel about that? A lot of times when you communicate in that way, you'll see that the person never even noticed the shift at all 
Or they might tell you, yeah, this is going on or that's going on. So that's why I did this, that, or the other. And then they'll also express to you that this is a shift that I'm going through. That way you can be there for them. Or they'll express to you that this is the way I'm doing things from here on out so that you can decide whether this is a friendship that you want to continue to manicure and maintain. So you you must always communicate about the changes, the different patterns, the triggers that you understand and see. Look, I noticed that you've been doing this for a while now, and every time you do this, it triggers me in a negative way. Now, you still have to do your work. There is no excuse for you to just go around a big old ball of emotions with your feelings on your sleeve every time someone does something you in your bag. However, if there is something that is happening that you feel is malicious or someone is doing something that makes you feel vulnerable or upsets you in a way, it's important for you to express that. Every time that you say this or every time that you do that, it affects me in this way. What can we do to make sure that that does not happen? Or if that is something that the person normally does, what can we do to make sure that we work that out to where it works for both of us? When you're able to communicate in that way, platonic relationship, acquaintances, companionship, or romantic relationships, I promise you, your relationship will have less confusion and it'll last a lot longer in a happy space. So be open and accepting, not trying to change the other person. Make sure that you are clear on the goal of the relationship and the reason for the relationship periodically checking back in on a regular basis to figure out different ways that you guys can cultivate a stronger, healthier relationship for both parties involved and how you guys will elevate together. Relationships that communicate in this way are the most successful and last the longest because the common goal for both parties are being met. And also make sure that you communicate. If there is any way that these steps do not help you in a relationship, you might need to go ahead and let the relationship go. And there is nothing wrong with doing that. There does not always have to be a knockout, drag out when you have decided to not allow someone to your second part of the journey. A lot of times when there is negativity regarding a relationship ending, that's because the relationship was toxic. And I'll say that again, look at your relationships. When you start to pull away from a relationship and that relationship becomes negative, That's because majority of the time the relationship was toxic. Any relationship that you have that was built on the foundation of love and commonality and respect will understand when it is time for you to move away because your commonality and the goals for where you want to take your life and relationship is not the same. You guys can separate as friends for two and three years and then come back together at a later point when your commonalities are then aligned. But it doesn't always have to come from a negative place. And if you are in a relationship and you do feel like it does deserve a good shot, it does deserve to have a good try, give the person person space. I don't feel like people give each other the respect and space enough. Do not crowd me. It's a toxic level in always not wanting to talk about things too. Oh, I don't want to talk about that right now. Okay, well, when is the best time to talk about it? Because we're going to have to talk about it. We're not just going to not talk about it. So I'm going to give you your space, but you're going to have to let me know when is a good time to talk about it because we're going to run up and through there. Okay. There is an avoidance or a manipulation when someone does not want to talk. However, do not badger people. Allow them space to process what's going on. Sometimes you want to answer right then and there and a person cannot give you an answer because they don't know what the hell going on themselves. I can't give you a concrete answer because I'm either one, not sure of what's going on. Number two, don't know how to articulate myself in saying what I need to say. Or number three, I need to calm down in general so that I can even process my feelings and what's going on. So give people the space to do that. And it might even take a couple of weeks. But after that time, then we need to discuss whatever we need to discuss, whether it is we're going to mend this and move on 
or we're going to part ways and go on about our business as friends, companions, lovers, or whatever we're going to do. But we do need to talk about this and you do need to allow people that healthy amount of space. And as I said earlier, if you have that healthy level of detachment, then it shouldn't be hard for you to do that. And if all else fails and you feel like this is a relationship that you want to keep and cultivate, then maybe you need to get a bipartisan party, someone who has nothing to do with either one of you guys and a friend or a counselor and sit down and talk it out. Sometimes you cannot hear what a person directly is saying to you because you love them and care for them so much that you can't really hear what they're saying. Sometimes you need to hear it from someone else or sometimes a person needs to be a mediator because one of you guys speaks more than another or one of you guys can articulate your feelings more than another. And so you need someone to be there to make sure that both of you guys are heard and clarity is made so that you guys can figure out how to move forward in your relationships. So I hope this episode was helpful for you guys. I hope it was able to help you to understand how important the relationships that we have mentally, spiritually, and physically play a major part in our lives and how important it is to get in alignment and balance to have healthy relationships so that you can be a good steward over everything that is in your life so that you can manifest more and more great relationships with people, places, and things. Thank you for tapping in. Thank you for listening to this episode. This is the first episode in the relationship series as I will have many more for you. And if you are interested in speaking about relationships and different relationships that you have in your life, I am definitely open for that. Please go to mental health the new wealth on Instagram or mental health, new wealth at gmail.com. And we will definitely arrange to do so. Thank you again. And as you are doing your work to become a better person on an everyday basis, please. And always remember your mental health 